I'm Melissa Fleck with SAT7, and we're Facebook Live with author Mary Turkington. Mary Turkington has written a book titled The ABCs of Proverbs. Thank you for joining our Facebook audience today. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. The thing that I really love about this book is that you've taken a book of the Bible that's packed with wisdom, maybe a little intimidating for some of us, and you've broken it down into the simplicity of the ABCs. It's easy to understand. It's something we can apply to our everyday lives. What first inspired you to write the book? Well, actually, I was inspired about five or six years ago to study Proverbs, not really to write a book. And I ended up spending three years trying to organize it because there's all these little gems of wisdom and they're so wonderful, but you know, you might be talking about children in the second chapter, one verse, and then six chapters over, there's another verse about it, but you know, you don't kind of get them together. So I ended up after that much time making sort of like a concordance of just the book of Proverbs. And I had every word, not A and that and stuff like that, but every word with um, it, every verse that was had that word in it um, completely written out. And when I got through, I thought, hey, maybe a minister or a teacher or something might find this helpful. So maybe, um, maybe I could offer it um, as a book to someone if they want to publish it and do it, you know. Well, I talked to someone a lot smarter than I am, and um, I had no experience. I was very naive. And when I spoke to them, they said, well, you're not a published author, and there aren't many people that would be willing to publish that for you, and um, besides, since it's over 500 pages, probably no one would want to pay that much money for it anyway. <clears throat> so I thought, oh, Lance, I guess I'll put this aside. But a little later on, um, and they had also suggested that maybe it would be uh, possible to do something with it if I condensed it somehow. How you condense proverbs, you know. But as I got thinking about it, um, at first, I just put it aside, but I happened to notice an advertisement for a publishing, self-publishing company. And so I thought, well, I could ask a question anyway. So when I did, they had said if I would um, be able to condense it some to maybe down 100 pages, then it would be a possibility. And so then my challenge was to condense it, and I came up with the idea of having a, B, C, a, the, a word, each word beginning with A or B or C, and doing a devotional with it. And so that's what I ended up doing. And um, uh, I was blessed to have some friends that thought it was good enough that they would be willing to endorse it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And um, so I went from there. There's a chapter in this book. It's called K is for Kind. And kindness is somewhat of a precious commodity in our busy culture today. Uh, what is the kindest thing that we can do for someone? Well, you know, I think that being kind is taking care of physical needs. Um, we often see people that are hungry, people that are without clothing, without a shelter even. And if we see that, we certainly want to help them out. But I think really the kindest thing we can do sometimes is to listen because the needs that we have that affect our heart and our soul are hidden. And um, unless you get to know someone, you don't realize sometimes the pain they're suffering. And um, I think of people like Elvis Presley, who, you know, people admired him so much and he had so much talent and all. And he had the world, and everybody thought, oh, if they could be like that, you know, and have so much. And then it turns out that he had a lot of real pain inside. And so I, when I'm uh, with people, I try not to be talk all the time. <laughs> I try to listen. And um, I think it helps people to, to really know that someone cares. So the kindest thing is if you can show God's love that way by listening. Mm -hmm. There's one other chapter that I think is really worth talking about. N is for now. I may already know that God wants me to do something, and I know I tell myself, um, I'll get there when I'm ready. What's the rush? Don't I have my whole lifetime to, to get there and answer God's call? Well, 
I had a nephew that died when he was about nine or ten. And I had a brother that died when he was about 23. And I had a real close friend that died when she was in her 50s. And these days, everybody's dying that I know because I'm 84 and <laughs> we're all getting there, you know. So you never know when God's going to call you. And because we don't know, I feel it's important to stop and take the time right now, if we haven't already, to, to find out about Jesus and to listen to him if he feel he's calling you. And if you don't know him, um, if someone was listening to this, I would hope that they would try to find out and come to find how much he loves them so that their life can be changed. And, and if people don't know him, they don't really think about heaven. As you, when you get to be my age, you think about heaven a lot because I lost my husband and, and I'm, I'm looking sorry. forward to the time you know, when I'll be with him again. But when you're younger, it seems so far off. But sometimes it's not that far off. So if we as Christians can share our love with others and help them to know him, and if others that hear about him and they're not too sure could take the effort to get to know him, it would be a wonderful thing. And they'd have more than just this life to look to, because sometimes this life brings a lot of sadness. But when you're with him, it's glory forever and joy. Yeah. yeah. You've alluded to the fact that you're not just an author, you're also you know, a, a mother, you've been a wife, um, you've also been a supporter of Sat7's ministry over the years. And there are a lot of great ministries out there doing meaningful work. What was it about Sat7 that led you to support that ministry? Um, when I, I don't know how I first came to know about Sat7. I don't remember what started me on it, whether it was some literature I read or what. But anyway, I do receive literature on a regular basis now. And um, I wish I could give more, but I, I give to a number of ministries, and I love doing it because I believe in them all. And I do feel that if you're going to give to someone, you should kind of check it out to be sure, because God wants us not only to give, but to give with good stewardship, not just to give and maybe be hurting someone more than helping. So um, I have checked it out, and um, I love that it's close by my own home. I mean, you know, 30 miles away, less than that even. And um, that I can feel a fellowship with you, but at the same time, here you're dealing with people across the world and you the literature that you send and the stories that you tell about people who are suffering and going through so much and it helps me to grow in my own faith because i have nothing to suffer i mean when i look at their lives and you know the little bit i do for the lord it seems like nothing so i'm delighted that i can do something even if it's not a lot well we appreciate you giving us a look behind the cover of your book and also into your heart and, and your wealth of life experience with all the things you've done. Um, we're getting ready to conclude our broadcast, but if you'd like to learn more about Sat7 or Mary Turkington's book, The ABCs of Proverbs, check out the webpage listed above this video. It's sat7usa.org slash proverbs. That's sat7usa.org slash proverbs.